Happy Monday, everyone. I hope everyone had a wonderful weekend and you're recharged and ready for this week. Um, so, you know, I've been thinking a lot this weekend on, you know, um, you know, wealth, finances, and how being a new mom will change some of the things that I think about and also let me be more proactive on certain areas in my financial life. Hi, Michael, how are you? Um, so, as I said, I've been thinking all weekend and these are some of the things that I've been thinking about when it comes to, you know, wealth building, um, keeping more money in my pockets to make sure that, you know, I'm able to, you know, have more money for my family. And also, you know, in terms of not overspending on taxes and also what are, what are some of those protection items that you can have for your family going forward, that all um, blends into your financial st strategy, whether it's um, tax savings, investing, um, making sure that you um, have the right insurance and so forth, all placed together into that financial puzzle. It's an entire puzzle, you know, wealth is one piece, tax is one piece, and everything else, you know, has to fit together in your money life. Um, being a mom in process every day is different. So I have a new appreciation, I would say, for the term, um, you know, take it a day at a time or something. Because, you know, today I'm excited, I'm energized. But tomorrow, you know, you just don't know what type of mood you're going to be in or, you know, if you're going to have the energy for tomorrow. So, you know, you know, feeling that way and also you know, thinking of more about, you know, being, you know, more money smart and so forth helped me to, you know, came up with these po points to take. So if you are a mom in process and new mom or um, you're, you're already, you know, in business and you're a mom or even if you're not a mama, you're thinking about having children later on in life. So these are some of the things that I was thinking about that can help with the, you know, wealth building process so when i think about it i have five big things that came to mind um this weekend or you know these things weren't only you know a revelation this weekend these are things that i've been working on but now that you know your my life is going to change and so forth it, it puts you know a little more pressure and a little more seriousness on how to get this done in the most effective way possible and the first one is um, different types of income. So, you know, business income, you know, how you can separate, you know, the way you pay yourself to make it be, you know, a stream of investment so that you can also reduce your tax rate. Do you have other um, businesses that you invest in where you don't have to spend a lot of time in those businesses so that you can also, so that you can also invest um, in other in um so that you can other um have other investment you know mine um is you know real estate that you're able to make additional income for real real estate that's taxed at a lower rate so when it comes to the tax world different income are taxed much differently so the income that you work for in your business the income that you gain from investments the income that you gain from passive income and this passive income is not what they talk about online saying that if you create this course, you're gonna get passive income. That's completely different from what the government classify as passive income. Um, if you're gonna have rental income and so forth, you know, those types of incomes, income get taxed in a different way. But your business is the key to building this income that you're able to allocate funds from your business into different income streams so that you can continue to lower your tax rate. Also, the way that you pay yourself can lower your tax rate based on if you're paying yourself a salary or a distribution, that those two ways does come with different tax rates that you can also separate them and keep more money in your pocket. On the wealth business side is also how can you push income to family members that are in lower tax bracket. So 
if you're a business owner, then this is also a great thing that you can implement. So if you're shifting income from your business as your business start making more money to a person in your family, let's say your mom um, or your child, that they're in a lower tax rate. Hi, Kevin. Um, then what will happen is your combined tax on yours and the person that you shifted income is going to be much lower. This doesn't mean that you're going to give them any sort of control. This doesn't mean that they're going to have any say on how the income is allocated. This doesn't mean that you have to um, write a big check or anything like that. It's just um, a strategy where you can push income to one family member that's in a lower bracket without giving up any sort of control. And then your attorney can tell you that even if you add, say, your mom to your business because she's in a much lower tax bracket and some of that income gets allocated to her, and you know she's paying at a much lower tax rate and then you're paying you know at you know your higher tax rate how in combined you know you're saving money and then you know your attorney can help you to so stay protected so that you know your mom is not going to run off with you know what portion of the business but that's not going to happen because it does not give her control or it does not give your child control of this type of income so when you're looking at the overall wealth building then you know shifting income is a big part of it um whether you're going to move income from your business to a family member in a lower tax rate or one of the things that you can also do is you know give lease back and this is where you have someone in your like your child uses let's say your car like a business car that you can um, gift it to them and lease it back. Um, this is used a lot um, with assets that can be depreciated, like your car. For instance, when you first get a car, you take a big write off for taxes, and then afterwards, you know, there's not a lot of you know, large write, -off, write offs associated with this. So if you gift it to your child, you can then lease it from them. So you have, you're reducing your taxes in ways that you're moving money from your business to make these lease payments to your child, but you still have this vehicle that you're using your business. So it's basically you're shifting, you know, the money to your child where, you know, they're, you know, in a much um, lower um, tax bracket and then you'll be able to still utilize that asset and also get the deduction for that. Um, so, you know, wealth building, it's accumulation and also how you can um, make your cash work for you in, in a more strategic way. A lot of the ways how you hear about, you know, growing wealth, it, 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 it comes with spending money. So what are some of the ways that you can spend money, but also keep that money that you're spending within your family so that you can increase the overall value of what you know everyone owns, or even to just have your children um, pay for their own expenses just because you find a very creative and legal way to do it or have your business pay for it. The next thing um, is that I talked about is the higher stra child strategy. And I'm definitely going to implement this one. And tomorrow I'm going to get into more detail on how you can move step by step in starting to implement this like tomorrow. And what are some of the things that you have to have in place to start implementing so that you can take advantage of this higher child strategy and you know when you look at a lot of the a lot of um clients that have used this strategy use it for educational purposes but if you your child has a hobby and you know they have a pretty expensive hobby then they can also pay for their own hobby and you get a business deduction for it and it's legal and it's documented that's the key this is not you just going out there and trying to spend money on all these um you know, whether it's snowboard equipment, you know, basketball stuff or whatever sport your child is in without any sort of documentation to support a legitimate deduction that can be covered under the IRS code. So this one is completely legitimate. What you use the money, what you use the money for after it leaves your business is completely up to you. As I said, most people use it for educational purposes 
but other people, you know, you can use, you can give your child a portion for them to spend on whatever they want, want their, their hobbies so that they can feel rewarded. And also when you look at the educational incentives that are out there right now, a lot of them, they are so small, so meager, like, you know, the educational credit is what, $2,500 or something like that? Um, in tax credit and you know you can accumulate a lot on the 529 plan but that only give you you know a state deduction so how can you combine them all together you know hire your child gift lease back um, you know shifting income you know the 529 and you know and you know getting the educational credit how you can plan and combine those all in one so that you're continuing continuing to reduce your tax rate and keep more of the money that you're making no one wants to overpay on taxes and the problem is a lot of taxpayers are overpaying on their taxes um the next thing is insurance now you don't get a lot of um deduction per se with certain types of insurance but it can be used as a cash um, flow strategy and it can also be used as a protection plan for your family and you know you can look at all different types of insurance you know life insurance so what i'm thinking about in that category you know do you know do i have the right plan you know know that i'm gonna have you know a child do i have the right you know life insurance plan am i paying too much um when you look at your you know you know, health insurance, you look at your casualty, your car, home, and you know, that insurance bundle. Are you being effective on the way you're bundling, you know, those policies to help you save money? And this is not about you going out there being cheap and buying the cheapest policy. It's, you know, when you take a look at, you know, deductibles and everything, you know, are you using your money more? efficiently are you in plans that are pretty flexible that you can continue um, to utilize the cash flow in later years and also use it as a way to you know build your family use it to incentivize and also to help with your entire wealth building picture as i said you know when you come to the overall umbrella of well thinking and you know keeping more money in your pocket you know you have to look at you know all the different areas you know tax savings is a big part because a lot of business owners as i said pay you know ten thousand dollars or more over in taxes um you know they have the wrong you know struck into the structure they're paying themselves incorrectly they're not um being aggressive on some of their deductions because they're just um, don't know what to document or how to document some of these strategies or they just simply just don't know and that's one of the things that um, that business owners are suffering from when it comes to saving a lot of money is that they just don't know what's out there they don't know the strategies that they can save like even think about losing weight that's a big one losing weight everyone knows when it's time when they want let me speak for myself. I know when it's time for me to, oh my gosh, it seems like I'm gaining weight. I need to lose weight. Um, for most of my friends or most people, everyone has that one dress that they put on and that they always want to fit in. Or let me speak for myself and my friends. We all have that one dress that we always want to fit in. And as soon as you do your test try every quarter of that dress and you can't fit in it, then you know that you're gonna lose weight. It may not be the most effective way when you think about weight, losing weight, but everyone knows at what point when they get to and they go, gosh, you know, I need to lose five pounds, I need to lose 20 pounds. But when it comes to tax savings, people don't have that benchmark or that, you know, parameter to, that, that measurement to say, you know, okay, I paid, I paid 30,000, this year in taxes, how can I legally reduce it? Um, you know, what are some of the questions that I need to ask? What are some of the, the strategies that I can implement? If you're not asking yourself these questions and if you're not 
meeting or talking about this on a quarterly basis, then most likely you are overpaying in taxes. And if you're not able to say this is the amount of money that I'm saving, then you're overpaying. So this is for all the um, the um, moms that are out there that are you know working hard, working on your business, trying to implement um, boss lady structures, um, trying to be a wealth builder for your family to when you're looking at these uh, com components to, you know, think, you know, wealth is a big umbrella, but how do you put in, you know, the tax savings, the, um, the insurance policy, um, and, you know, also, you know, your income sources into one nice, pie that you know you can continue to reap the rewards you can continue to pull cash from in the future um but that's it for today um let me know if you have any questions um send me a message and i'll be glad to answer um tomorrow we're going to be talking about we're going to go a little more in depth in hiring your child and show you the step by step on how you can get that implemented so that you can start saving money not today but tomorrow i wanted to start today but since i'm going to be showing you that tomorrow that you can start saving tomorrow have a good day